This is Kevin with Divinely Design, and um, this is going to be a paper crafting video to make these mini milk cartons. And so this is kind of an adjunct video to the milk bath uh, video, and uh, just sort of a packaging idea for them. This is one example, and you can see um, looks kind of like you know a mini milk carton. It's really cute, and you could certainly label this with whatever you like and you know call it milk bath or whatever I thought that was a cute idea so we're gonna we're gonna make one of these today okay um, so I'm gonna use a scoreboard and we're gonna start off with a piece of paper that is seven and five eighths by five inches seven and five eighths by five inches Okay, and I'm going to start on the long side, the 7 and 5 eighth inch. This is a, a Martha Stewart scoring tool. <laughs> and I'm going to score at half an inch. Five and five eighths. and seven and a quarter. Then I'm going to turn it so that that little score is at the top and I'm going to, so now I'm on the five inch side and I'm going to score at two and a quarter, four and a half, and then you'll notice or hopefully you can kind of see at the very top here I have these two smaller square sections. So I want to make a, squ a score, and it's, but it's only going to be in this part up here, just that little section. So you make that score at three and three eighths. Okay, so now you see you have a score that is in the middle of this box. Now you'll need to make two more score lines. They'll go from here from the top of this, where it meets this horizontal line, where this vertical line meets this horizontal line, from there to the corners. Now, I, I found it very difficult to use this actual scoring tool to do it, although I'm sure you could. So what I did, and I found easiest, is just to take a ruler. I'm going to put my scoring, the, the, the stylus, right at that point where those two lines meet, put my ruler up against it, and then move my ruler down to the corner and then just run my stylus a couple times that way and then in the opposite direction as well. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. You end up with um, sort of a triangle right in the middle there, okay? I'm gonna make a few cutouts here. So along the very bottom here, we're going to turn these into tabs. Let me get my paper snips instead here. Okay, so cut up there and then turn this into a little tab on either side. This is eventually going to be the bottom of the box. So these outside pieces we're turning into little tabs. This side piece we're going to do the same thing. So along the just those little tiny pieces of lines I'm going to cut up and then cut a little notch out here. Okay. So what you end up with is um, this is half this is half of the box, okay? Right? So these tabs, you're gonna have tabs here for the bottom and tabs for the side. And I'm just going to um, I'm not gonna use my burnisher because I I don't think they need it here, and I find that 
for this project it, it could actually weaken the sides a little bit so just give them a, a little bit of a fold so um, along all of your score lines um, <clears throat> these little triangles you can just sort of bend them you don't have to do a lot with them right now but give them a little bend each way okay so this is half of a box now I've already cut out one of them so you'll need two now you can make this with just one piece of eight and a half by eleven um, cardstock okay so now we want to take um, some glue and I'm, I'm going to use uh, Tombow mono multi glue and I like liquid glue for this because it is a box and if it's going to hold something that's you know got some weight to it you want some strength uh, and I'm putting glue just along those sides I'm going to line up my one half that doesn't have the tabs with the tabs I just put the glue on press that down nice and firm give it a few seconds to dry um, the Tombow glue dries pretty quickly okay so I'm going to turn it over I'm going to do the same thing now with that other side I'm just going to fold it over take my liquid glue put liquid glue on all the tabs and then fold over the box to meet with it give that a good press a few seconds to dry this will make sure your box is nice and strong okay and then I have kind of the right the beginnings of my box taking taking shape now on the bottom you're gonna take these sides fold them in you can see that leaves it open you're gonna cut a piece of um, some designer paper and you're gonna cut it by two and my, by one eighth and two and one eighth so I have this piece of designer paper I would put glue on it and then just glue that to the bottom and I actually like to glue one and then sort of drop it in there and put it in the bottom as well uh, down at the bottom of the box to give it some nice strong support and I would also then cut some strips um, that are one and three quarters wide by four and a half long and you glue those to each of the sides okay so um, doing the bottom actually take some time and I think you guys would understand if you glue that there you would see that and then once you have it all done this side with the triangles are you can just push closed right on both sides you can see how that kind of folds up right and then you can um, glue the top or uh, you can uh, you can close it however you like uh, in my example um, I made um, I, I would glue it again you could glue it here just to make sure it's nice and secure um, you could punch a hole through it and tie a ribbon on it um, or you could staple it I suppose or you could put some washi tape over it uh, but I think glue again for a nice sealed uh, firm box uh, will do well so um, I guess we could just wrap this up pretty quickly here alright so I'm not going to put one in the the inside but I'm going to put the bottom on here just put some glue around the edge pop that on hold it in place for a few seconds again I think the liquid glue is going to give you a lot of good strength I'm just rubbing the sides down here making sure that Tombow gets and one thing I kind of like to do is just put it flat and then press it down nice and firm along the sides so I know that that bottom piece is getting put on there nice and tight okay and then take the decorative pieces Sorry, I'm a little off camera here. Use some glue. And 
And then I'm just going to repeat that on my other sides here. Again, I, I'm moving kind of quickly because I don't want to bore you, but you would give some time to dry. And you see how this size of paper that I gave you, the dimensions, gives you a nice border um, along the sides. Um, I kind of like that look. So you have this decorative paper uh, that's sort of featured and it sort of has this frame around it almost uh, from the solid paper that's in the back. Now I'm not using any specific paper. This I don't know where this pattern paper came from. I've had it for a little while, but this would work probably really well with um, if you're a stamping up person, um, if you have some of their designer series paper and their coordinating cardstock, um, that would probably work very nicely. Uh, this isn't from any coordinated set. This was just purple uh, cardstock that I got at, you know, Michael's or Joann's or AC Moore or something when it was on sale and um, it had a bunch of different purples in it. And then I have this designer paper, this pattern paper from just a pattern pack that I have that it's been sitting in my car, my uh, paper stack for a while. So I thought that coordinated nicely with this. Okay, so our box is pretty well done. Now again, I have this other two and uh, one eighth piece I would glue and put in the bottom, sort of in the inside, just to give some nice uh, strength to it. I'm going to finish off this card uh, by doing just a little topper for it. So I have some uh, other paper uh, just to coordinate with colors. Uh, this, is a, this is a scallop punch by Fiskars. Um, oh, before I punch it, actually, I'm going to stamp. Um, I have some Distress ink. This is uh, shaded lilac. And I have a Stamping Up stamp from the Chalk Talk uh, stamp set. I'm going to be using this one that just says for you. So I'm going to use the shaded lilac. Just ink that up. I'm going to stamp it pretty close to the edge because this Fisker's Punch um, doesn't give you a lot of sort of room to play with. So just press that nice and firm. Um, and then I'm going to take my Fisker's Punch and kind of line that up, the scallop edge on the stamp itself, see if you can see that there. Punch that out. I have another piece of just sort of a pale lilac color and I have a Stamping Up um, Scallop Punch. Uh, I don't know how big this is. Oh no, I'm sorry, this isn't Stamping Up. This is EK. Okay. And then, again, I'm going to take my Shaded Lilac, and I have the blending, the round blending tool. Uh, I'm going to take that Distress Ink, and just go around the edges here. Same thing on the smaller one. Okay. And then I have a dimensional just going to put on the back of that stamped one. Kind of center that inside the other one. And then I'm going to use glue again here. You you could use another you could use a dimensional, you could use sticky strip or anything here kind of I'm just gonna put this on my box uh, kind of at a 
a jaunty angle, maybe sort of up toward the top here. Let that sit for a few seconds. And again, I would put whatever it is in there, um, and then I would just glue the shut. So uh, there we have it, okay? So we have sort of two examples here. Oh, falling over here. Uh, kind of a green one and a purple one. And uh, again, I like the idea of kind of coordinating the colors uh, with the design, the, you know, the, the designer paper or the pattern paper with the box itself. Um, if you're using that milk bath, um, again, you could do a scent that kind of goes along with the color. So maybe I put lavender in here and maybe I put a mint fragrance in the green one. Um, and again, kind of create a fun label there for milk bath. So, okay, so that's the uh, paper project to go along with the bath salt uh, project we did earlier. Thanks so much. Um, uh, if you like this video, click that uh, thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button. And comments, questions, leave them below. I love to get them and I try to respond to all of them. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Check back later.